Hi guys, welcome back to Real Estate Informed where we keep you up to date on all things real estate. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the real estate market and when I think it'll crash and what I think you know will, will eventually happen. I'll, I'll have some answers for you, but I won't have all the answers. So um, yeah, I don't have any um, article that I'm just going off of what I think, what I've been seeing with mortgages, what I've been seeing with real estate. So, um, with real estate, what I think is going to happen, especially with this pandemic, um, one question that needs to be answered is when does everyone go back to work? That's one question. And whether it's end of May, um, end of June, end of July, whenever it is, um, one question that needs to be answered is when do we go back to work? Because the longer you drag this out, the worse it's going to be, the worse it's going to get. Um, economically for small businesses for employees independent contractors um, all of that will affect mortgages and how how will that affect mortgages um, the longer you're unemployed the le the more you eat into your savings so i bet you there's people right now who had 20 percent down for a, a three hundred thousand dollar house uh, which is like what well, 60 grand but they're eating away at their savings right now because they're not working and it's taken so long for the stimulus checks to come in and it's taken so long for unemployment to kick in. Um, because of that, I think that's going to all affect people's credit. And when it affects people's credit, it's going to affect mortgages because six months from now, a year from now, when they try to buy a house and they see good deals on the market, their credit has been affected because of this. Their, jo their job history has been affected because of this. So then that's going to all play into getting a loan and whether it's a, you know, a good loan, um, a low down. I mean, banks are already from day one, from March, I can't remember what day, but late March, banks had all, Chase Bank and other banks had already told people, hey, nothing less than 20% down. FHA, the government, even said that we used to be able to take 580 um, uh, credit. Now we're taking 640. So they're tightening up. Everyone is, all the banks, um, and even non-banks like, um, uh, what is it, Quicken Loans, they're uh, tightening up their standards because it's usually, you know, uh, traditionally, it's easier to get a loan from like Quicken Loans, a non-bank versus like Bank of America. Um, but, you know, both of them are tightening up now because of this pandemic and people don't know what's going to happen. Um, so then we run into a unemployment to credit issues, to mortgage issues, to real estate issues, as in when you don't have enough people who can get a mortgage, that'll translate into people who list their houses on February, January and February 2020 prices. Those prices aren't going to stick anymore in September 2020 because we had this crisis and that buyer pool. So it's like it's like saying you had 100 people who could buy your house. And I've said this in a video before, but it's like saying you in, in February 2020, you had 100 people who can buy your house who are approved for a lower mortgage and whatnot. And then in September, it's going to be 10 simply because of the credit issues that, that that's going to um, pile up. Um, people are going to get behind on their credit cards and they're going to get behind on their mortgages and they're going to take forbearance and it's going to affect their credit because they won't directly affect the credit. But, um, you know, obviously in different articles and stuff, you read about them writing notes on your credit, which technically that's the gray area. You could write a note on someone's credit and then TransUni, Equifax, Asperion is going to turn around and lower your credit score. Um, so it's, it's so, it's such a, like banking can be such a dirty business sometimes. So I feel like we're going to run into a mortgage crisis as in not enough people are going to be approved for loans and mortgages. And then that's going to translate into a housing crisis. So I could tell you that if you're looking for a house right now, People have the prices. No one's reducing prices. No, people are just keeping the prices up. And I bet you there's people out there buying thinking that, hey, you know, the people are all scared. I'm going to buy, buy, buy. Um, I, I think I still think the, the market is, I, I'm in the Seattle area, Washington State. And I think the market is highly, highly, severely overvalued. And that um, we are definitely I, the only question that I can I can. I can't answer is how much. Are we going to reduce 5%? Are the prices going to go down 10%, 15, 20, 25? We don't know. But what I can't, what I do know is that prices will go down. That's for a fact. And another thing is, 
it's gonna take time. You have to understand that real estate runs behind everything. Real estate is a 30 to 60 days behind everything else. If a house sells in a neighborhood, say a house sells for, a house is listed for a million dollars today. It does not sell and it turns around and sells for 950. Well, it'll go pending tomorrow for 950 and it'll take 30 to 60 days to close on that house, usually 30 to 45, but let's just say 30 to 60 days to close on that house. So 60 days later, two months from now, another house that goes on the market has to list their house at 950 because that house, the, the house that sold before was in better condition, had a newer roof, was bigger. You know, your, your house is only 2,800 square feet. That one was 31. And it sold for 950. So you have to list yours for 925, 935. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So then that 935 house will sell or no, it'll stand on the market because the buyer pool is very low. So it'll stand on the market for say a month. So add a month to the, the two months that we already have. So we're at three months now. Then that house is going to lower its price to about 900,000 and someone's going to offer 890 for it and it's going to get accepted. It's going to go pending add another 60 days for closing and you're at five, uh, four or five months now and Boom. Then the next house that goes up on that market will have to kind of measure up to that house. And are they going to put listed for 950? Are they going to list it for 900? Because the other one sold for eight, 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 890,000. So do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do you understand how it takes time to, for the prices to lower to where in February houses in the neighborhood were selling for a million plus to now they're selling for 890. That's a hundred and ten thousand dollar deduction, but it took 60 days for the first house to sell another 60 days for the second house plus a month for it to um, be on the market for it to get that 890 offer. That's five months. So well, we're, we're right now. What are we in April? So we're talking and this isn't, I'm talking about this is after you open America up and see what the economy does. Do we have a bounce back or do we not? Um, so we're talking, you know, it's April. So May, June, July, August, September. We're talking September, October, November is when we'll see what's happening in real estate today. We'll see it in October. And I know that sounds crazy, but the scenario that I played out for you now just multiply that scenario by millions, millions and millions and millions of houses all across the nation are going to do that. Not the same price ranges, but are going to do that exact same thing. And it's it, just because the house doesn't sell. There's no like comparatives because you and then here's another thing like in, in real estate, we'll, what we do is comparatives, a comparative analysis where we look at the houses that sold in previously. And then you look at your house and you kind of make adjustments to price it accordingly. Well, you can't take pre-pandemic prices and try to list it with that. It, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be right. You would have to use prices that are today, that are now, you know, um, that are 30 to 60 days old. Well, we're 30, to, well, 30 days into this pandemic and in a little while, we're going to be 60 days into this pandemic. Do you know, do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, there's going to be a decrease in real estate. Be patient. It with your day will come whether whether you're in Seattle, Los Angeles, the Bay Area, New York, Florida. It doesn't matter. Your day will come and you just have to be patient and watch the market. If this properties, I just showed a house, $600,000 house um, in a suburb of Seattle right here. And that neighborhood, any pre pandemic um would sell would sell um uh, roughly at i would say 350 between 350 and 400 dollars a square foot so this house was 1700 square feet six hundred thousand dollar house pre-pandemic i think there would have been probably 30 to 35 offers on the house on the first day and that's not an over exaggeration that's just the seattle market um now that house was listed seven days ago 600,000, uh, 1,700 square feet, gorgeous on the inside. I think it was built in 98, but definitely upgraded. It, it, I mean, it had crown molding in there, for goodness sakes. It was, it's gorgeous on the inside. Um, well, I think it's approaching eight, nine, 10 days now, uh, zero offers. So continue to look at real estate, monitor that real estate and see and try to understand. Now, now that house will probably have to lower to 575 and it might sell at 565, 65. But then the next house two months from now is going to list in that neighborhood. Can't go back up to 600. 
Do you know what I mean? Because this house was pristine and it didn't sell for 600. How is someone else's house going to sell for 600? You got to lower the bar. And then obviously, there's, and, and then the last topic I want to discuss is the bounce back. Everyone talks about when everyone goes back to work, there's going to be this major bounce back and we're going to be right back in it and we're good to go. <sighs> I'm sorry, but that's not how economics works um that's just not how it's made that's just it just just doesn't work like that um whenever there's a pandemic when people lose their jobs we are at 20 percent nationwide job loss unemployment right now um it was 26.5 million they say by the uh, end of next week we're going to hit 30 million people are going to be unemployed in the u.s um you can't just bounce back from that if you think it's just if you think it's just like a snap of the fingers and here's a here's an example of why i don't believe that wuhan china is in this pandemic is like three months before us um and so when they did their when they opened up their city and they, they opened up transportation trails the light rail everything um malls were still empty Restaurants were still empty because of fear. People um, were still scared of the disease. They were still scared that they might get sick. If they were over the age of 65, they're, still, they, they're scared. You know, I, I have friends who have asthma that um, are, are still worried. You know, they still wear masks and whatnot. And even if they open things up and, you know, I mean, I think about it right now, too, that, you know, I, I'm a gym goer. I love going to the gym every single day. When they open up that gym, it's going to be a different feeling. Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? Do I wear gloves? Do I just wear gym gloves? I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, you know, like, uh, you know, someone's using a bench press. I use it right after him, exactly where his hands were or exactly where my hands will be when I do the bench press. Like, and the, the, the gym experience is a very intimate experience. You're in close quarters with a lot of people. So if you think it's going to be the same, I, I, y- y- you're kidding yourself. It's definitely not going to be the same. And the bounce back isn't going to be as sharp as you think. I think the bounce back might take a year, two years. And I'm, I'm not even talking real estate wise. I'm talking about economically. I'm talking about people's jobs. Um, so I, hopefully that answers your question. Um, if you like this video, please thumbs it up. Um, if you have, uh, please subscribe. That really helps my channel. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything, please leave them, um, in the comment box below and I will answer them in my next video. All right. Thanks guys.